welcome once again to the fifth lecture in the topic of cash flow statement i hope you all all have enjoyed the journey so far along with me at least i have enjoyed myself recording these sessions for you all um and uh, and i hope these sessions are helping you all benefiting you all and um, really is an aid to your learning okay uh, and we don't know when regular classes will start i really hope to see my students back in the class and um, however much we do this uh, recorded sessions it's nothing the experience that we have in a classroom where we have students and you know you can see their faces and they have so many questions to ask just meeting them interacting with that you know that is really missing and i really miss it <laughs> i really miss it but this is the best we can do in the situation that we are right now that we are right now and it is uh, quite thoughtful of national council to think of this method you know to divide the topic among various faculties and to have these uh, sessions recorded you know so that students don't miss out ultimately uh, what we want to know is that the student should not miss out the student should be in a position to gain as much as possible knowledge so um, we are doing our best we are doing our best and always remember that the faculties are always there for you all okay and uh, it's just because uh, you know i am a faculty from the institute of hotel management goa that doesn't mean that uh, i am not available to any of the students you know from any other institute a faculty is a faculty a teacher at the end of the day is a teacher and on these two topics that is fund flow and cash flow which i have been given to cover in case you have any more questions if in case you don't understand something because uh, you know keeping i i always keep in mind uh, the way i have thought i think uh, funds flow and cash flow is not uh, what any other person will uh, from a commerce background will teach to commerce background students it will be very very different but uh, here after teaching uh, uh, you know for hotel management student for so many years i understand i understand the psychology of hotel management students and i also understand their limitation they are very limited in the sense that uh, like you know there are so many things i explained to you about like, capital how to identify from the capital that this is a sole proprietor's uh, balance sheet you know it is a sole proprietor it is not a public limited company so these limitations are there in a hotel management student in the sub in, you know in the area of this subject accounts so when we teach accounts there are a lot of things in and around that subject that we have to explain to you so you will understand why this is done in this manner which uh, for an account student we don't have to explain you know they will know if you you, you just for an accounts background student you have to just say this is a um, uh, capital of a sole proprietor so it is even it is given to understand that a commerce background student should understand if it is a sole proprietor's uh, balance sheet uh, uh, drawings and uh, loss reduces the capital but here for a hotel management student we will have to explain these little little things okay and um, so i understand your limitation i really understand your limitation especially those students who come from science background arts background you know uh for that matter even students who come from uh, accounts background not all are very good even many there are many commerce students who hate accounts who don't like accounts accounts was an headache for them uh for many commerce students accounts is an headache even when they are doing commerce and some of them must have thought yaar humne socha tha ki चलो अकाउंट से छुटकारा मिल गया यहाँ आके होटल मैनेजमेंट में भी हमको अकाउंट्स करना है सो मेनी स्टूडेंट्स इवन गेट दैट रूट शॉक दे कम इन द फर्स्ट ईयर एंड सेकंड सेमेस्टर माय गॉड अकाउंट्स है और अकाउंट्स एक साल नहीं पूरे तीन साल है अकाउंट्स सो दिस इज समथिंग बट इट्स 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 एन इंटरेस्ट सब It's an interesting subject, and like I told you, you know, right at the beginning when I was doing funds flow with you, I said that. आखिर में पैसे तो कमाने हैं 
<laughs> और पैसे कमाना इतना इम्पोर्टेंट नहीं है जितना इम्पोर्टेंट है उस पैसे को संभालना उस पैसे को मैनेज करना ओके okay? सो so, अगर आपने अपनी बिजनेस खोल ली इफ यू स्टार्ट योर ओन बिजनेस वो बिजनेस को मैनेज करना है फाइनेंस मैनेज करना है उस बिजनेस का ओके सो दीज आर द सब्जेक्ट्स दैट्स आर गोइंग टू रियली हेल्प यू ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ टूडेज लेक्चर आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल एंड सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ टूडेज लेक्चर it's a, a little lengthy problem so we will not waste too much time we will go straight to our problem okay once again i don't fail to thank national council and my institute for all the support and our objectives remain the same just that the adjustments are a little different we are going to prepare a cash flow statement we are going to calculate operational profit and loss and uh, this is a very very different problem even you know even if you look at your funds flow statement that we have done this adjustments are very different no no adjustments are given that means there is no additional information that is given but this is a full fledged problem it is a full fledged problem and uh, it has lots in it i don't know how much time the students must have taken in the year 2003 to solve this problem one problem one more problem similar like this but a little less complicated also i have taken we will do that again i think that's the next problem we will be doing then uh, we are going to prepare the non current accounts okay so that's what we are going to learn in today's lecture so are you excited and let's move ahead so let's have a look at the question we've got to spend some time with this question today okay that's your question prepare a cash flow statement balance sheet of tinkers inc as on 31st december 2002 now let's just read this balance sheet equity share capital 3 lakhs 3 lakhs there is no increase in equity share capital no fresh issue of shares are there then we have general reserve like you know you see uh, the problems that we did so far were little sole proprietors small problems now this is a little bigger company then we have general reserve from 40000 it has gone to 1 lakh okay so that means the minute general reserves are there and profit and loss account is there we have to prepare operational profit and loss then we have preference shares at the rate of 10% there were no preference shares at the beginning of the year but by the end of the year there are preference shares which means during the year we have issued preference shares we have raised a capital okay in the form of preference shares capital has been raised okay and what does that at the rate of 10% means it means on these preference shares the company will give them 10% rate of dividend for preference shares it is fixed for debentures interest is fixed only for equity shares it is not fixed dividend is not fixed and that is why we work on the eps that is earnings per share you must have done it in unit 1 okay uh, then we have debentures debentures at the rate of 12% 12% is the rate of interest we had no debentures at the beginning of the year but we have debentures worth 50000 by the end of the year which means during the year along with preference shares even debentures were issued so capital has been raised in this two form in the form of preference shares and in the form of debentures next sundry creditors sundry creditors there is a reduction and this is a current liability we will see reduction means it is a payment then we have provision for dividend provision for tax now just pay attention to this provision for division and provision for tax when we were doing funds flow statement uh, i think in some of the problem i had taken one in the calculation of operational profit and loss and one i had taken in the you know in uh, working capital okay but here what we are doing we are not preparing schedule of changes in working capital then what do we do with provision for dividend and provision for tax and i really want you to pay attention to what i am going to explain to you now 
and it has to be registered well in your mind. Provision for dividend. What is provision for dividend? Once, when a one year accounting, one financial year gets over, one accounting year gets over, the company prepares its profit and loss account. They, they come to know what their profits are. And on the profits, they declare a dividend to the equity shareholders. So if you see this provision for dividend, and when you have to declare dividends, and you have to pay dividends to the shareholders okay you have to pay them not always uh, dividends are paid in the form of cash not always you can even give bonus shares okay but people look for cash dividends so when you're going to pay cash as dividends so it will become too burdensome at the end of the year all of a sudden to pay so much so what you do is you create a provision to pay these dividends now look over here provision for dividend at the beginning of the year is 10000 which means the company last year must have decided that worth 10000 rupees has to go as dividends so they made the provision and kept which means during this year during the year that we are preparing this this 10,000 rupees will be given as dividends. It will be issued, it will be given as dividends during the year. And you can see this 12,000. Now this 12,000 is at the end of the year. Now this 12,000 is the provision that is prepared and kept for this year's dividend that they are going to declare, okay? And once the year gets over in the coming year, they will give that money they will distribute that money they don't distribute in that year itself okay so that year at the end of the year profits are calculated and then dividend is uh, uh, decided and then dividends are declared so this 10000 okay 10000 is the previous previous year's dividend but that 10000 will be paid during this year Okay, it will be paid during this year. And this year's 12,000, which they have made a provision, 12,000, this they will pay in the next year. Generally, that is how it happens. Now, tax is also the same. Tax is also the same. They had made a provision because at the end of the year, profit ho gaya, profit itna high hai, uska income tax barna, all of a sudden, paise kahan se aayenge. So you have to create provisions and keep, okay? Abhi, abhi dekho, virus suddenly aa gaya. If we had no provisions, many of us would have, uh, you know, not been able to survive, okay? So that is why you have to always create provision. And I think one habit of us Indians, okay, is very, very good habits. Our mommy papa always say that you save money, save money, save money, save money, save money, save money. Okay, don't spend all your money, always save because, the, you know, um, uh, like you, you think uh, now even this virus, virus didn't knock and say I'm going to come, it all of a sudden comes. So hard days and a rainy day and some emergencies uh, don't announce they are coming. They come sometimes all of a sudden. And so we have to be prepared. Okay, so provisions are prepared in businesses and kept. Otherwise, it becomes too heavy for the business organization. So provision for tax. So pichle saal ka unhone socha ki 5,000 tax pay karna hai. So they had created a provision of 5,000. Or ye jo 5,000 hai, this 5,000 we are going to pay this year. That is how we have to consider it. That this 5,000 is paid during this year. Okay. And uh, uh, 10,000, 10,000 is the provision that they have created and kept for the next year okay it is this year's tax it is this year's tax but when the year gets over and when profit is calculated and then when income tax is calculated and then it is paid okay and then it is paid so this is what they will pay next year but we have created a provision and this 5000 was the provision of the previous year but during this year we will pay it off and i hope you have understood this part okay and then we have the profit and loss account i don't have to explain anything about the profit and loss account because by now you know what is profit and loss account okay now let's go to the asset side 
plant and machine plant and machinery now you see don't get confused this is the information that is given about the previous year okay this is the previous year and this is the current year now what they have done here to just uh, you know uh, put students into confusion now this is done to test the student this is done to understand how well a student can read the balance sheet okay so we have plant and machinery and this is 1,10,000 and depreciation is 10,000 and so the net figure is 1 lakh you should be interested in this one lakh you have got nothing to do with this you are not interested in previous years depreciation why because we are cre we are make, preparing cash flow statement for the current year not for the year 2001 we are making cash flow statement from 1 4 2001 sorry this is 31st december no yeah we are not interested in the year 2001 we are preparing the cash flow statement for the year 2002 1 jan 2002 to 31st december 2002 we are preparing for this year okay we are not preparing for the previous year so we have got nothing to do with this depreciation okay so in case you get a problem like this don't get confused you've got nothing to do so this is the closing balance of the previous year one lakh is the closing balance of the previous year and uh, which is going to be the opening balance for us so plant and machinery the value at the beginning of the year is one lakh and i hope you have understood this part now come over here at the end of the year see what they have done here again at the end of the year to just test the student they have given us the value at the end of the year before providing for depreciation and that is 225000 now this is the value of plant and machinery at the end of the year but before depreciation and then they have shown 15000 is the depreciation for the current year now 15,000 is the depreciation of the current year, okay? And then we have the net value of plant and machinery that is 2,000, 2,10,000. So 1 lakh is the opening balance of plant and machinery and 2,10,000 is the closing balance of plant and machinery. Same is in case of furniture. Furniture 11,000 minus 1,000 depreciation. It is last year's depreciation. We've got nothing to do with it. 10,000 is a closing balance of previous year, which becomes the opening balance for the present year. And even year, they have given us 21,000. They have given us 21,000. This is the value of furniture at the end of the year, but before providing for depreciation okay and then 2000 is the depreciation this depreciation is of the current year this is current year depreciation we should be interested in this depreciation and 19000 is the net value so 10000 is the opening balance of furniture and 19000 is the closing balance of furniture okay though there is no adjustment we will be opening a plant and machinery account and we will be opening up furniture account to find out how much of purchase or sale is there okay then we have investment in bank fds bank fd is not a fixed deposit ye hamara investment hai. so you are clear about investment so ye investment hai at the beginning of the year but by the end of the year ye investment nahi hai iska matlab hai jo bank mein humne fixed deposit karke rakha usko humne tod diya and we have taken the money okay we've uh, you know or it must have matured a bank uh, fixed deposits must have matured and the money has come into us we have received the cash then we have stock debtors and cash we i don't have to explain about this we have been doing this continuously okay so come on let's start let's start solving a problem okay because this is a little lengthy problem we have to hurry up okay so as i told you we will be uh, opening a plant and machinery account and we will be opening a furniture account to find out whether this purchase sale what it is and then we will prepare calculation of operational profit and loss account and then we prepare the cash flow state okay. come on look into your 
a plant and machinery account plant and machinery account is an asset the opening balance will come on your debit hand side so two balance brought down okay how much is the uh, plant and machinery i told you okay what is the closing balance and what is the opening balance so 1 lakh is the opening balance of plant and machinery so let's write the uh, we know the depreciation for the year so let's write the depreciation we know the depreciation by depreciation okay actually it is profit and loss account and uh, we have to you can put depreciation in the bracket okay because uh, depreciation is charged against profit and loss account and how much is that 15,000. It is directly given in your balance sheet. 15,000. Okay. That's the uh, uh, amount that is given. Okay. And write the closing balance by balance carried down. How much is the closing balance of plant and machinery? Please, it's not 2,25,000. It is 2,10,000. 2,10,000. Okay, now see which side is heavier. Obviously, this side is heavier. So we're going to see what is the value. 2 lakh 10 plus 2 lakh 15 is 2 lakhs 20. 5,000. So write that on both the side. 2 lakh 25,000. This is the value same in the balance sheet we are getting before depreciation. Okay, now the difference comes over here and that is 1 lakh. 25,000. Plant and machinery is an asset. Asset comes under real account. Debit what comes in, credit what goes out. Balance is coming on the debit hand side. So, what is this? Purchase. To cash account and in bracket write purchase. Okay. So, now because we have opened up plant and machinery account, we know that we have bought so much plant and machinery in this year. Worth how much plant and machinery we have purchased and it is 1,25,000. Let's very quickly do our furniture account as well. What is the opening balance of furniture? By two balance brought down. How much is furniture? What 10,000? Okay, 10,000. Furniture also we know the depreciation, so we will write the depreciation. Okay, how much is the depreciation of furniture? <clears throat> 2,000. Okay, 2,000 is the depreciation of furniture. Then let's write the closing balance. Closing balance will come on the credit hand side. Closing ba by balance carried down means that's the closing balance. How much is the closing balance of uh, uh, furniture? 19,000. Okay. So again here, the credit side is heavier, which means there is going to be a purchase again. 19, 20, 21. 21 ho gaya. on both the side you write 21 or 21 may say 10,000 minus kar diya to kya ho gaya? 11,000 okay and this becomes your two cash account in bracket you can write purchase this is your purchase Okay, understood? Okay, so this is very simple and it is very easy for you to understand. Okay, so we've done these two. Okay. Now let's come and calculate our operational profit and loss. 31st December 2002. Yes, no? 2000. 2002. Okay. They have given us profit and loss account. Profits at the end of the year. How much is the profit at the end of the year? 30,000. 
profit at the end of the year is 30,000. And non operating expenses add non operating expenses now we are going to look at the non operating expenses first what we will do is we will take these two depreciations okay and then i will explain to you or let's start from the uh, balance sheet let's start from the balance sheet and let's go to the liability side to understand what will come uh, in your calculation of operational profit and loss come to the liability side of your balance sheet we have equity share capital general reserve okay general reserve let's take that transfer to general reserve okay uh, how much is that uh, general reserve 40000 is at the beginning of the year and uh, 1 lakh is at the end of the year so you are going to take the difference Okay, 1 lakh minus 40,000 is 60,000. So that much amount, we consider it as uh, transferred to general reserve. Then preference shares doesn't come here, debentures doesn't come here, sundry creditors doesn't come here. Okay, provision for dividend. Provision for dividend. What are we going to do with provision for dividend? I have already explained to you. We are going to consider 12,000 as provision for dividend and we are going to consider 10000 as dividend paid during the year okay so the next one is provision for dividend okay and provision for dividend is how much 12000 this is a provision at the end of the year even tax is going to be the same provision for actually it is taxation okay and that is provision for taxes how much 10000 this is what we are going to pay next year okay provision for tax so we are done with the items on the liability side of the balance sheet now you come to the asset side asset side there are just two and they are the depreciation on these two assets okay so depreciation on what plant and machinery <clears throat> how much is the depreciation on plant and machinery 15000 okay 15000 and we have depreciation on furniture and fixture okay so it's okay and how much is the depreciation 2000 i don't have to explain this to you because you understand this now okay i don't want to put that okay so are you clear about this are you clear about how we have done this calculation of operational profit and loss okay so a provision for dividend what is the amount at the end of the year that's the provision we have made and kept okay and uh, provision for taxation ten thousand we have created and kept for paying tax in the coming year and the what is the amount at the beginning that during the year we have already paid it we have already paid it during the year okay so that's all that will come over here so you draw a line and you take the total in the outer column 60000 plus 12000 plus 10000 plus 15000 plus 2000 how much do you get 99000 okay 99000 draw a single line and you add it up with 30,000. How much do you get? 1,29,000. 1,29,000. Okay. Then what is the next thing we have? Less non-operating 
income. We don't have any non-operating income. There is no profit on sale of any asset. Nothing is, okay? Then we have less profits at the beginning of the year. How much is the profit? Look into your balance sheet. Profit at the beginning of the year is 15,000. 15,000 is the profit at the beginning of the year. Underline it. Okay. And then we are going to minus 1,29,000 and 15,000. So we get 1 lakh 14,000. Okay. I hope you all have understood because I don't think we have solved any problem like this, okay? Um, where we have taken and where I have explained to you about provision for dividend and how you have to consider the uh, uh, amount at the beginning of the year as paid and the amount at the end of the year as provision created for the, uh, for actually it is this year's only for the tax, but which will be paid in the coming year. So you have created that provision and care, which actually affects your profit and loss appropriation account. And I had told you <clears throat> to do a little bit of, uh, you know, research and just go and read a little bit about what you understand by profit and loss appropriation account. <clears throat> so I just hope it's not becoming too heavy for you. <laughs> But this subject, you no know, finance is a little heavy and uh, it challenges your brains. <laughs> and that is why it becomes very interesting. Okay, so you've got to challenge your brains. You no, know, you've got to challenge. <laughs> That's how, because brain is again like a machine. The more you keep it working, the more fruits it will give. It will work that faster. It's a machine. It has to be really oiled well and it has to be um, used well, okay, brains. So these are the things that challenge your brain, okay? So I hope it's not really heavy and you have understood this part of provision for dividend and provision for tax that I have explained to you. So before we go to the cash flow statement, just have a look at your plant and machinery account and, uh, And we have calculation of operational profit and loss. This is actually you not know, the way that I have explained to you here. It is a very, very safe way of solving a problem. And then come on. Now let's start with cash flow statement. Okay, cash flow statement for the year ending 31st December 2002. Please, let's write the opening balance, otherwise I forget. Opening balance, opening balance of cash. And how much is that? Opening balance of cash is 98,000. Okay, 98,000. And what we are going to do next is last time in our last problem, we forgot. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to write our operational profit. It's a positive. Okay, operational profit. So we are going to write that. funds from operations. Funds from operation. I hope you all are understanding and it just didn't get just too heavy for you all, all of a sudden. Okay. So that is your funds from operation. Now what we are going to do is we are going to go through each item of the uh, balance sheet. Okay. 
uh, equity share capital, we have seen there is absolutely no increase and no decrease. So equity share capital is not going to affect our cash flow statement. Then we have general reserve. General reserve is already taken care of in non-operating expenses. Then we have preference shares. You know, we have issued preference shares. So when we issue preference shares and we raise capital by way of preference shares, cash is coming into the business. So what we will do is we will write issue, sorry issue of preference shares and how much is that 50,000 okay issue of preference shares 50,000 cash is coming into the business then was the next item we have debentures we have issued debentures also so issue of Debentures and that is also 50,000. Okay, that is also 50,000. Then we have sundry creditors. What is sundry creditors? Sundry creditors is your current liability. And what is the rule? What is the rule for cash flow statement? What do we do with current assets and current liabilities? Okay, when there is a decrease in current asset it is considered as a receipt and when there is an increase in current liability it is considered as a receipt now what is happening to sundry creditors it is decreasing so when current liabilities decrease is it a receipt or a payment it is a payment now you just see who are creditors creditors are people to whom you have to pay okay you have to pay them so uh, how many creditors did you have at the beginning of the year one lakh and by the end of the year you have eighty-six thousand creditors okay so what has happened during the year you have paid off some of your creditors and so when you pay off some of your creditors what is happening is cash coming in or cash going out cash is going out so it will come on the payment side decrease in creditors okay and how much is that uh, 1 lakh minus uh, 86000 will give you 14000 14000 is your creditors okay now comes provision for dividend pay attention okay provision for dividend what we have considered 10000 was paid during the year because it is dividend okay actually you know it is a current liability provision actually is a for dividend actually is a current liability so this 10000 that has been declared as dividend how many years you are going to keep you cannot you have to pay it off you have to pay dividends to the shareholders so this 10000 is paid to the shareholders and 12000 is created and kept to be paid in the coming year for the profits of this present year okay uh, I just hope I was not too fast over there. Okay. So provision for dividend actually is a current liability. Hmm? And this 10,000, we cannot keep it pending. We will have to pay it to them. Okay. Provision for division, uh, dividend. So this 10,000 is paid during the year. So you will have to show it on the payment side. Paid dividends. And how much is that? 10,000. Okay, 10,000 dividend is paid during the year. Then the same thing, provision for tax. Provision for tax. 10,000 is created for the next year, but tax paid during the year is how much? 5,000. Okay, that's the tax paid. And we have profit and loss account that we have taken in calculation of operational profit and loss now you come to the asset side okay we have plant and machinery plant and machinery so you go to your plant and machinery account okay in plant and machinery account we can see there is a purchase 
of plant and machinery purchase of plant and machinery how much 125000 okay so it is purchase means it will come on the payment side let just write the amount before i forget okay 125000 okay so purchase of plant and machinery 125000 that we get from the plant and machinery account then what is the next one furniture furniture also we know there is purchase of furniture we have just solved purchase of furniture okay purchase of furniture and fixture let's go and see how much it is purchase of here purchase of furniture and fixture is 11000 11000 worth furniture and fixtures have been purchased so here 11000 purchase of furniture and fixture then we have investment in bank fd we had bank fd fixed deposit at the beginning of the year by the end of the year fd nahi hai matlab it must have matured and we got our money so cash is come into the business okay so uh, we will just write investment in bank fd you know we consider it as matured okay uh, and that is 15000 because we cannot sorry we cannot sell fd if it is a uh, shares of some other company that we have purchased and that's an investment we can sell those shares but bank fd how we are going to sell we cannot sell so it probably must have matured and we got our money 15000 okay then we have stock what is stock stock is your current asset is it increasing or decreasing it is 85000 at the beginning of the year and 1 5000 at the end of the year so stock is increased so increase sorry increase in stock is a payment payment side you have purchased more stock more raw materials and everything so increase in stock and how much is that 20000 okay 20000 is increase in stock okay so that stock then we have debtors what is happening to debtors debtors have decreased okay debtors are people who owe us money so they have decreased which means they have paid us so cash is coming into the business decrease in debt decrease in debt ha one lakh 62000 and one lakh 32000 so it is how much decrease in debtors is 30000 okay 30000 decrease in debtors and then we have cash cash closing balance how much is cash closing balance 172000 come on now total up your fund flow sorry cash flow statement and let's see if this cash flow statement is telling okay 14000 plus 10000 plus 5000 plus 125000 Plus eleven thousand, plus twenty thousand, plus one lakh seventy-two thousand. Okay, so we are getting three lakh fifty-seven thousand on the payment side. Three lakh fifty-seven thousand we are getting on the payment side. Let's see what we get on the receipt side. 
98,000 plus 1 lakh, 14,000 plus 50,000 plus 50,000 plus 15,000 and plus 30,000. 357,000. Ah. <laughs> okay, so that's your cash flow problem solved. Okay, you know what I want you all to do is take it as a challenge. Take it as a challenge, and the same problem you prepare a funds flow statement. Okay, prepare a funds flow statement. Don't prepare calculation of operational profit and loss keep it like this okay don't prepare plant and machinery account it's already done furniture account it's already done you don't have to prepare this so you keep everything as it is and you only prepare schedule of changes in working capital okay take all your current assets and current liabilities and you prepare now what you do is when you are preparing schedule of changes in working capital don't touch this provision for dividend and provision for taxation don't consider that as current liabilities okay let that be as it is in calculation of operational profit and loss and here okay tax paid and dividend paid you leave it like that even in your funds flow you show it in the application side dividends paid tax paid you show it in the uh, uh, application side and you prepare your fund flow statement. Okay. And see uh, if your fund flow statement tallies. It has to tally. It has to tally because half the problem is already done. Pro operational profit and loss account is already prepared. Individual non uh, current assets are already prepared. Okay. Everything is calculated. What you have to do is just uh, your. Um, schedule of changes in working capital and your fund flow statement and what will uh, not come in the fund flow statement this opening balance cash will go in your schedule of changes in working capital you can quickly make a note of that then uh, funds from forum operations will be there in your fund flow issue of preference will be there in the fund flow issue of debentures will be there in the fund flow investment in bank fd will be there in the fund flow decrease in debtors will not come it will go in schedule of changes in working capital come on the payment side uh, decrease in creditors will not come in your funds flow it will go in the calculation of schedule of changes in working capital dividend paid will come in your funds flow tax paid will come in your funds flow purchase of plant and machinery will come in your funds flow purchase of furniture will come in your funds flow then increase in stock stock will go in your schedule of changes in working capital and closing balance cash cash will go in your schedule of changes in working okay so you prepare a funds flow okay simultaneously do a funds flow and it's challenging it's challenging and uh, you tally it and you see the amount of joy that you will get when you will tally it okay so that's cash flow that we have done today so let's um, see what we are going to do in our next lecture next lecture also you know we are going to solve a problem which is a little bit like the one that we have solved today okay see this is a problem that we are going to solve so what i want you to do is the name is very nice from the following balance sheet of message sweetheart limited okay so what you do is just read the question very well this is what we are going to solve um, in our next lecture so again it's a very simple problem just like the one that we did okay so you don't have to worry or you don't have to fear and uh, you can here you know what they have said that we have to prepare both funds flow and cash flow statement so uh, but i i don't think so we will do funds flow and cash flow we'll see how it goes and um, uh, we can do only the cash flow statement for now and then after that the problems that we are going to take we are going to do cash flow and fund flow but we should be able to finish it within the time we have of one lecture because i don't want to carry you know the problem to the next lecture i would like to finish it Okay, so please read this question well, study the question, uh, intricates of the question, okay? And uh, so 
that's what we are going to do in our next lecture okay so i hope you uh, enjoyed solving this problem so this problem again was so different from the problems that we have solved so far okay it was very different right even you will agree with me that this problem was very different and this problem was uh, uh, unique in that sense okay it, unique in that sense really okay uh, so and you know many a times like if you look at this question it initially when you look at it it looks so tough but then when you read it again and again and understand it it becomes very simple okay so i will see you again in the next lecture okay so till then um stay safe and solve problems search for more problems and solve more problems and do the fun flow statement okay, i'll see you again soon thank you bye bye